dwarf skin is what I'm going to paint. Um, I'm going to layer paint. It's the first time I, you know, this channel is mainly me trying things out for the first time. And so this is the first time where I try and actually paint skin seriously. I've painted two faces before, uh, I think. In this case, it's going to be dwarf skin and it's going to be dwarfs that have been sort of a little bit dark skinned, been on the ground for a while. Uh, they're sort of a bit purplish, <laughs> not really. You'll see. I mean, in, in theory, this should be a tutorial that could work for any skin tones. You just have to adjust the colors. Skin tones, only layers, no washes, nothing like that. Just layer painting. They are primed black, Citadel Chaos Black. And the first thing that I set out to do was find a base tone, like one, the base color of the skin, the normal. And then I'm going to paint lighter and darker shades. A disclaimer for this entire painting procedure, it's time consuming. So I'm going to mix my own color by blending several other colors. If I would be painting an entire army, I probably would try and find a specific bottle for every layer or at least the, the base uh, coming out of the bottle so I didn't have to mix a new one every time. But in this case, it's just the three dwarves. So I'm mixing my own. Cadmium skin, Vallejo game color. I'm also adding some game color heavy red and some model color Vallejo flat earth and some game color royal purple. I put it in my wet palette. If you don't have a wet palette, this is definitely the time to buy one or make one. There's uh, plenty of videos about the internet about wet palettes. I figured they've been, these dwarves have been down in the mines for a long time and they're sort of a bit dirty and grimy from uh, shooting cannons and not being out in the sun for long, but they've still sort of got a pretty dark skin tone because they're dwarves. Uh, this is just, you know, my imagination going crazy on me here. Um, but, you know, there you are. So then I just cover these. Forgot to say, this is diluted heavily. You can see when I paint on top of the black that it's not really covering all that well. Um, it's the uh, lots of thin layers approach to get a nice finish and not to get any sort of thick brush stroke strokes or thick paint. So it's thin paint. And because it's a thin color, I repeat the process two or three times. But you mean you want to cover all the black. Um, so two to three times. I said it was going to be time consuming. So next up, I got this stone gray from uh, also model color, Vallejo. I had that and some cadmium skin to my wet palette and mix it in with the original mixture just to get a bit of a lighter tone going. To double check what this actually looks like, um, for the first time in my painting uh, career, I don't know, it, it's not really a career, in my painting, um, anyway, I start painting on my thumb because I've seen everyone else do it. But it turned out to be a pretty good trick actually to check the differences between the, the you know, how much lighter or darker a, a color is. So I start off with the original mixture and then I paint the new, a little bit lighter shade next to it to see how big the step between them are. The new little sort of brighter mixture I made was a bit too bright. So I added in a bit more of the dark one so that the difference wouldn't be too huge. And then I started painting this on the miniature. And the point here is to paint pretty much everywhere, but not in the darkest recesses. So there's no, it's not, you're not gonna paint it all over it all over everywhere again. Now we're going on to the next layer. It's going to be like a gradient. So the, the darker one is is sort of in the in the recesses and this is starting to build sort of the highlights. You want to leave a little bit of that darker color wherever you want it to be more shaded. 
So as you can see, I'm trying to get sort of most of the muscly bits that are sticking out and things like that. Next up, doing exactly the same thing, but with an even brighter color and on even less an area. This time I'm using the cadmium skin more than the stone gray. So it's going to be a bit more sort of, well, it's not really pink, but it's a warmer tone. And we're now getting into the territory where we, I can hardly see the paint because I've accidentally sort of managed to match my own skin tones. So then I go into once more painting the highlights. And in this case, you know, painting even less an area than I did before. So you get the same kind of gradient that I have on my thumb is pretty much the same kind of gradient I want on the miniature. So if we look at this muscly fella that, you know, his job is to clean the cannon, which is probably dirty work, I guess. Uh, it's easiest to see what we've been doing. It's starting to take shape, the sort of three dimensionality. Can you say that even? Is that a word? I also want to mention that like every time I add a new color into that mixture, I tend to add a little bit of water as well, just making sure that the paint is, is well watered down and not too thick. So now we're going to work in reverse, basically making a, uh, a darker shade to paint in the absolute uh, recesses. And you might, in, the, in this case, I'm using the, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's the more of the purple. So I mix in some purple with, with the original mixture and make like one shade darker. And you might be wondering, well, why are you doing that now? Why didn't you start with it? Well, checking on my thumb if it sort of matches into my little gradient here and then trying to do just the absolute like remember now you're trying to paint a surface that is even smaller than what's left of the original base color this is starting to get complicated and then we're back to even more highlights um, this time I go back to the stone gray again I don't want any more pink in my mixture so I add more stone gray and yeah, thinking gradient, gradient again. I'm just, you know, it's, it's gonna cover an even smaller surface than the last highlighted surface. And then guess what? I'm doing it again on even a smaller surface with an even brighter color, as long as it looks nice on my thumb. And guess what? <laughs> After that, I'm doing it again. Only this time I'm using a white. Um, I don't have the bottle to show you. It's just a, it's a white game color. So I'll wait, I'll get it. Might as well do it properly. There we are, off white, game color, Pelejo. And now we're on to doing the absolute sort of tip of things. This is like, yeah, it's just, it's the smallest little sort of raised highlights really. And there we are, That's, um, that was the last highlight. I can say now, in, in, in retrospect, that um, I could have gone brighter on the highlights, I think. The, the light that I was using. Sorry, Kat, what do you want? Here's the cat. So anyway, I could have used, I could have gone a little bit brighter with the highlights because I reckon the light I was using while painting was a bit bright, which made it look a bit, look, it looked a bit more contrasty than, than I thought it was. It's a bit of a subdued look that I kind of like. On the other hand, it's not very dramatic. It looks, they look kind of real, but they could have been a bit more fantasy dramatic. I'm also gonna finish off the, the faces and everything. And with that means painting eyes and yeah that's a completely different story i'm gonna paint some eyes and they'll just have to ah, 
something that, you know, everyone needs to practice painting eyes, I guess. And this is... So I start with the white, just try and paint only the eye with the white. But I know it's with these dwarves. I don't know if it's the same yeah, with most miniatures, I'm, as I said. Um, I'm not I'm not the expert. I haven't painted all that many miniatures. But these eyes are really, really tiny. It's like little slits of, you know, eyes. Anyway, I start with the white and just cover the entire eye. And a lot more than should be covered with white. So after the white, I take black for the pupil. And instead of just doing a dot, I try and do a straight line. The trick is knowing where to put the straight line. I find that it's very easy to make people look completely crazy. You know, where is, where is he? You know, is, yeah. The good thing is you can always just try and paint white over it and do it a couple of times. So obviously you would have had, you know, you've been smudging around um, with white and black. So once you're done with, with the eyes, whatever way they're looking and if they look crazy or not, you go back with whatever highlighted color you've got or whatever and, and touch up around it. And in the end, this is what the eyes look like. Some of them, like mostly they look all right if you look at it from just one side. If you look straight on, like one of them looks okay. But it's a bit of a, there goes the cat. It's a bit of a skill. I, I realize you can make someone look sort of angry or happy or mad, maybe not happy, but or you can definitely make someone look a bit crazy depending on how you paint the eyes. Uh, and this is the easiest way, just the white with the black line. I guess if you get advanced, you can actually uh, do lots, lots of things with eyes, but this is, <laughs> this is on my level. So then I'm just gonna uh, paint some more things in the face, just to give it a bit more character. I prepared with a, I'm not gonna use it straight away, but I got a dark red um, that I'll be using for the face. Also adding, uh, if I haven't already added it to my wet palette, some more purple. Basically, I want to make it a bit more dark around the eyes, a bit sort of purpley. I want them to look like they've not slept for a while because they're busy shooting their cannon. Uh, you know, what can you do? And they've also been toiling in the mines or whatever, um, whatever dwarves do. So a, a bit of a sort of um, tired purple under the eyes, I reckon is perfect. And then with the red, I just thin it down heavily, like really heavily. And because I figured they not only have they been shooting a lot of cannon, I think dwarves, they have a tendency to indulge in uh, adult beverages. Um, it's a hobby of theirs. So their, their noses need to be red. It's sort of a dwarf thing. Um, also maybe a little bit on the cheeks. So uh, a heavily diluted red, so that it's not, you know, it's a little bit see-through. And then um, paint the noses a bit red. If you sort of uh, overdid it a bit like I did, you can always cover it up with the paint that's already in your wet palette. Once more, that's a great reason to have a wet palette because if you wouldn't have had a wet palette, by now your paint would have been dry and you'd have to mix all this again. But mine's fine and I can just go back to, you know, touch it up. I mean, and after that, they're pretty much done. I mean, uh, this is obviously, it's really small, isn't it? I did go in and try, I thought, you know, if I mix in some white, I can try and do some scars or something like that, a bit more texture on the skin. And I was kind of scared, so I didn't really, I did one and then I got scared and I stopped. But in retrospect, whatever little scar I can see on here uh, looks now kind of cool. So I wish I would have kept on going or at least tried. One thing is, I, I, as I said, I like the way it turned out. It could have been a bit more, the highlights could have been, it could have been a bit more contrasty. I think one of the reasons is like, this is the first time I actually painted miniature where every, when everything else is black. So it looked fine while everything else was black. But once I painted the rest of them, the clothes and, and, and the beards and everything, the skin was a little bit, you know, yeah, subdued. If the entire miniature is black while you do the skin, it probably pops more than it will when the rest of the clothing or whatever it is they're wearing is painted. Even though it's time consuming, the, the layer painting is the result. I very much like the way it looks. They're very sort of smooth and, and natural looking. Like you would have noticed in this case, like all the shades, they're not, I didn't mix in black, I mixed in purple. And I think if I would have just mixed in black, 
it wouldn't have looked as nice. The fact that the shadows are another color than the midtones and the highlights is, I think, kind of a big deal. The fact that it's sort of purple and then it's sort of more of the stone gray and then it's a little bit of more of the pink and then again it's more of the stone gray on top of that. It adds a depth that would not have been able if I just sort of did one color, uh, used a wash and then tried to paint the highlights by just mixing in a white into the base color. So um, I know it's time consuming and it's kind of fiddly. Um, not really good for shaky hands, even though I sort of have shaky hands, it did work out. Um, but I very much recommend you to try, at least with one miniature, this, this time-consuming way just to see the result, uh, if you have the patience. And um, thanks for watching. Bye.